Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. That cost you loaded to the cost of doing business including generating electricity. There are turbines there. You import those things. Because of your foolishness and lack of vision, the dollar exchange rate, when I was selected at 5 kwacha, you take it to 13 kwacha. That's a cost. It goes in producing electricity. Because of lack of leadership. Now, why we have no electricity is not because there is uh, no rain here. Yes, there's no rain. Yes, the Kariba Dam levels are low. But if we had brought in the solar option, like we are talking about every day, we would be generating solar power in the day. We would then close the turbines in the Kariba during the day, conserve the water to build the dam levels up and only generate as the solar through lighting power goes down, then automatically we begin to switch on the hydro turbines. And by morning, early in the morning, 6 o'clock, as the first light comes, you switch off the turbines at Kariba North Bank and the solar kicks in. There is a solution. Someone says, where is the money? There is the money from the presidential jet, from the corruption and the dollar to Sagahim. If you add ambulance, you add corruption in ambulance, save the money, add corruption in fire tenders, add the corruption in fertilizer, Mark Fallen, there is a money. Ndala Maziriko. All right. So who Tanika 7Z we can Now, yes. governments say that load shedding is as a result of a climate change. Do we have control over a drought? We don't. We don't have control of the drought. We don't. But load shedding is not as a result of drugs. We don't control drugs because that's God's decision. That's nature. But there are things we control in order to ameliorate, in order to get uneasy. That could drought Kariba Dam. Mujitumbo got, you know, my father in Dikama, Irijemans. Irijemans. There are things that leaders must do, which so, is not happening here. If, 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 if we don't have control over a drought, why should the PFD blame the honor of this salon shedding that we are experiencing? <laughs> you really want me to answer that question? I will answer it for the sake of yours for, and listeners. Those that take public office are responsible for the welfare of the people. Maybe the question you should ask me, what would we have done as UPMB when we know, because drought was not, there are projections that drought will, will be there. There are projections that floods are there. That's a human factor which is called knowledge. Then you use that knowledge, we in UPMB would have used that knowledge because we've known that there will be less electricity, not just because of drugs, my friend, but also because of the demand for electricity, population increase, industries. We as UPND would have not used the drought as an excuse. Because in Dubai, where these people are stealing money from here and buying homes in Dubai, my father, there is no Kariba dam there. Mvula Siro Kamunyama at Weo, 10 years Gulije Mvula. Takwa Mvula, 10 years Kunina Una. Akuna Pula, not Dubai, Akuna Pula, for 10, 15 years. If it rains, it drops just like this. But there will be electricity 24 hours. Why? Kichu. Brain, thinking, knowledge. Why? What do I mean? We in UPND would have considered solar option, a solar mix. 
would have considered wind electricity generation. You don't need to import power from EFCO to create jobs in, in South Africa, to sustain jobs, to send foreign exchange to South Africa, which results in the quacha depreciating, quacha losing value here, would have maintained or improved the quacha dollar exchange rate by not paying that $42 million for only two months of power, for only two hours of reduction in load shedding. Load shedding has not reduced. ESCOM itself is struggling. It has no power. Disaster and emergence. We declared a disaster and an emergency early on. Ahead of the pack. That's what leadership is. Not to wait for the pack. The drought we've never seen in memory. That's a phenomenon of God or nature. It isn't man-made. Climate change, yes, you can say it's instigated by pollution, yes. But really, which country receives rain, which doesn't receive rain, is not a decision of any particular leader or government or people. We get afflicted. And we declared this drought, which has caused food insecurity, energy insecurity, transcending into economic, potential economic shutdown when there's no energy as a disaster and emergence. Our focus is due, one, to feed the people, to feed fellow citizens. No one should die of hunger. And all of us, Secretary of the Cabinet, we left State House yesterday around 22, 23 hours to make sure that we secure food for all our people in the 84 districts determined by science, by research. That is a drought. Food must move to our people. Reverse order. Where FRA buys maize from, we are taking maize back to those depots, closer to the people. Very clear agenda. And your government, ministers, cabinet, permanent secretaries, this is the time we work double shift. Procurement people, please don't sit on decisions because you are looking for something. You will be in line for trouble. We were here up to 22, 23 hours last night to make decisions, to move, bring in enough maize, to mop the maize from different corners within the country and elsewhere, and move it. Food for work at a lower price, enhanced social cash transfer to support our people so they don't die of hunger. This is a big program. It's a national program. It's not a UPND government or alliance program. It's a national program. All of us must support it. And if we start petting, encouraging people to fight in the markets instead of focusing on the drought, what sort of leaders are we? Honestly speaking. Really? The second arm is to increase, improve our resilience. When the drought hits us next, we should be better prepared in many ways. One, we must water harvest for irrigation, for productivity improvement. At least when we irrigate, one center people was talking about, solar energy, whatever source of energy, that's what we're working on. Colleagues in energy, we have a meeting this week, Friday. to assess the progress we're making so that we don't have an economic shutdown. As colleagues in water, again, yesterday in the cabinet meeting, we took decisions on energy, on water, to alleviate the food insecurity situation, the energy insecurity, the threat on the economic activity. 
power must be available to irrigate us so we can produce food, even the dry season. That's a serious problem. We need everybody's hands and brain ideas, and they are all welcome. So, if that is what is preoccupying us, why should we now be digressed by lawlessness, by sowing seeds of pangas again in the markets, reminding the youth of what it was just two years, 11 months ago? Human nature, the people react, say, oh, yayamba futi ndewa manji, uyunga tabwela yayamba ndewa. People react that way. We shouldn't do those things. This focus on feeding the people and working on irrigation. I'm not saying we shut down democracy. It's not what I'm saying. It's what someone who writes that the president said shut down democracy. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we must understand our priorities. We must understand the need to maintain the rule of law. We must understand the need to fight corruption. That's what I'm saying. My message is simple and clear. So I ask the whole government machinery, we're working with the civil society, we're working with the church, those who have capacity to distribute, we're working with them. If you know an institution you are associated with which has experienced knowledge of distribution of food to the vulnerable, Cabinet Office is there, DMMU is there as a team who will enlist that, that organization. Women organizations, as I said, church, civil society, international organizations. We're working with the UN system here. I think that's our responsibility. God says, I put you in charge at a particular time, not your choosing, but my choosing. That's God. And when I do that, I will not give you a load you cannot carry. You will be able to carry it. But for us to carry that load, we must be organized. We must work together. We must not throw money or allow it to be stolen. Because we need every penny to now avail food and irrigation for our people. That's the message. We ask the country to support this agenda. Storage, all of those things. We shouldn't be able to have no food one season. We should now invest in storage, and we're doing that. We're budgeted for it now. It's going to happen. It may take time, but it will happen. I want to assure citizens. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.